All right, welcome ladies and gentlemen to section three from our unit four. We're gonna be looking at how to calculate and how to use the derivatives of inverse trigonometric functions, uh, namely the arc sine, the arc tangent, and the arc secant are the ones that we're gonna look at fully today. So you need to remember, first of all, arc sine is the same thing as saying this, y equals sine inverse, of x. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually calculate the derivative of this function using stuff we've learned already. Now there's a very big reason that this particular lesson comes after implicit differentiation. We're actually going to use implicit. Now you're not going to have to use this every time but what we're trying to do is to derive the formula for the derivative here. So first of all, we're going to switch and then differentiate. So we're going to make this something a little bit more familiar. We don't know how to differentiate sine inverse, so we're going to rechange this to say, to switch, right? So if y is equal to the sine inverse of x, that means x is equal to the sine of y. And then we can use our implicit differentiation rules to take the derivative of both sides. So if we derived, or if we took the derivative of the left side, the derivative of the inside function is y prime, and the derivative of the sine function is cosine. The derivative of x is one, and then ideally our thing is to get y prime by itself. So we need to say y prime is equal to one over cosine of why? Now here's the problem. I can't leave it like that because what does that mean? Now we do know that y is the same thing as sine inverse of x. So we can say y prime is equal to 1 over cosine of the sine inverse of x. Now here's what you're going to all groan about right now. We've done something like this bottom piece back in trigonometry about a year ago. We said if we are given that cosine of sine inverse of x is equal to whatever, we can use some triangles to make some sort of statement here that doesn't look like this. Now, we got to remember that we take the cosine of an angle that means that this thing is equal to theta. So theta is equal to sine inverse of x. And therefore, that means x is equal to sine of theta. Well, that's pretty handy because this is theta and sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Using some Pythagorean theorem, we can find that the adjacent side is 1 minus x squared all under the radical. Well, that means the cosine of this angle theta is actually equal to 1, or the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1, which is just the square root piece, which means I can replace that down here, and therefore, y prime is going to equal 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, given that we started with the arc sine function. Now that's pretty nice. And you have to understand, whatever this x is, is whatever's inside here. It could be another function, so we might have to do the chain rule. Okay, so I'm going to have to erase my thing here, because there's a couple other things I want to put on here. So this is what I was talking about when we get through the problem. This is the derivative. So the derivative of the sine inverse function of x is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now that's actually pretty interesting because the derivative of a sine function, what you think of as a sine function, has nothing to do with the trigonometry in it at all. So that's actually kind of weird. What I want to note in here is that the x in the derivative, so this x right here, is whatever this was. 
if this was x to the seventh power, it would have x to the seventh squared. If this was x plus 1, this would be x plus 1 squared. I'd also have to take the derivative of that thing. So using, we have to make sure we remember how to use the chain rule. So basically what I'm saying here is if I was to take the derivative of the sine inverse of some new function u, this would be the derivative of u with respect to x and whatever that function is times 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared. All right, let's see what that looks like in this particular function right here. So in order to calculate the derivative here, to take the derivative of sine inverse of x squared, you need to take the derivative of the inside piece using the chain rule, so that's 2x, times the derivative of the inverse function. And we know that is 1 over the square root of 1 minus something squared. And that something is the thing on the inside, so it's x squared. So we get a really simple function of 2x over the square root of 1 minus x to the fourth. And it really is as easy as that. As soon as you put these derivative rules to memory, it really does get a lot easier. All right, what about the other two? Now we're going to start with tan inverse. So we're going to do the same idea here. We're going to switch. We're going to say this is tangent of y is equal to x. And if we took the derivative of both sides, we know that the derivative of y is just y prime. And that the derivative of tangent is secant squared x. All right. So then we say, okay, well, y equals or sorry, y prime is equal to 1 over, sorry, secant squared y here, my fault, secant squared y, well, that seems a little bit weird. Well, what are we supposed to do here? It's pretty interesting. We know, we know, using a Pythagorean identity, that this is equal to 1 over 1 plus tangent squared y, which is actually pretty handy because we know that tangent of y is equal to x, and therefore tangent squared of y is going to equal x squared. And we get the statement 1 over 1 plus x squared. That's the derivative. The derivative of the tangent inverse function is, so this is equal to d dx of tan inverse of x. This is the derivative. And then for secant, let's go ahead and do secant as well. I'm going to erase the pen just for my screen not to get too full here. For secant, we're going to do the same thing. This becomes the secant of y is equal to x. Take the derivative. We get y prime. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. Oops. Derivative of x is just 1. Then we need to do some stuff. Well, let's just get y prime by itself. So we're going to say, okay, y prime is equal to 1 over secant of y tangent of y. Well, we know something about the secant of y. We know back here that secant of y is equal to x. 
And we're going to use another Pythagorean identity for tangent of y. We know that tangent squared is secant squared minus 1. So tangent is going to be the square root of secant squared y minus 1. And the reason that's handy is because we, again, know what secant of y is. So we can rewrite this as 1 over secant of y is just x. Remember, this now becomes x squared minus 1. So we get the square root of x squared minus 1. And we get a very simple formula for the derivative of secant as x times the radical x squared minus 1. And that is equal to d dx of secant x. Well, that's pretty handy, I think. So what I want to do here is I want to write again, just like I did on the last thing for sine, you need to remember that the derivative of the tangent inverse function of some function, right, using our chain rule, is going to be the derivative of that inside piece times times the derivative of the tangent function, which is 1 over 1 plus x squared. In this case, 1 over 1 plus u squared. And the derivative of the secant function, sorry about that, don't know where that came from, d dx of the secant inverse function, oops, sorry, of u, is going to equal the derivative of u with respect to x times 1 over x, sorry, ah, u times the square root of u squared minus 1. So these are two, now three, using the sine inverse one as well, three very handy functions or handy derivatives that we're going to need to really kind of uh, memorize. It really does come down to memorize. Something I did forget on the secant is that u value actually has to be positive, so it has to be the absolute value of u there. But that just comes down to taking the secant inverse and all that sort of fun stuff. All right. The other three. Notice we've done the sine... We didn't do cosine. We did tangent. We didn't do cotangent. We did secant. We didn't do cosecant. The reason is we get a very nice identity. Basically, the other derivatives are just the opposites of those three. So the derivative of cosine inverse is just the opposite of the sine inverse. The derivative of the cotangent inverse is just the opposite of the tangent inverse. And likewise, the derivative of cosecant inverse is the opposite of the derivative of secant inverse. Let's see if we can do this one right here. And then I'll let you guys go for the day. All right, so we need to find the derivative. So up at the top, I'm just going to remind myself that the derivative of secant inverse of x is equal to 1 over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. we got to remember that this is a u function. So we actually have to take the derivative of that inside. So the derivative of the inside here is 20x. So we're looking at dy dx, by the way, the first derivative. Sorry, 20x to the third. My bad. All right. 
times 1 over the absolute value of 5x to the fourth times the square root of this thing squared. So it's 25, or sorry, let's just put it in there, 5x to the fourth squared minus 1. If we do a little bit of simplifying, we get 20 over x to the third over absolute value of 5x to the fourth times the square root of 25x to the eighth minus 1. And then because x to the fourth, 5x to the fourth is always going to be positive, the absolute value things are not necessary. So we can actually do some canceling. We get 20 over 5 is 4. x to the third over x to the fourth cancels. And we get x over or x times the square root of 25x to the eighth minus 1. And that is your derivative. All right, I hope you guys learned a little bit a little bit of new stuff. Watch, uh, or not watch this. If you're watching this, you already watched this. I don't have to tell you that. All right, I will see you guys tomorrow.